Reverend Mother, I have sinned. What if the nuns didn't stop the Nazis? Ooh, okay. As the Von Trapps are fleeing the Nazis, at the end of The Sound of Music, they first seek refuge in the convent. Liesel, the eldest daughter, has a love interest turned Nazi sympathizer named Rolf. Mm -hmm. He finds the family and he raises the alarm. This forces the Von Trapps to flee in their vehicle, heading to the mountains in hopes of crossing into Switzerland on foot. The Nazis give chase, but their vehicles won't start. We then discover that two of the coldest nuns in history had masterfully disengaged the Nazi vehicles, Real. giving our protagonists a chance to escape with relative ease. But what if the nuns hadn't managed to pull off this fantastic stunt? What if the nuns hadn't stopped the Nazis? Welcome to my sequel to The Sound of Music, The Sound of Nazi Interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and it, we're going sequel, are we? We're going sequel. Or we're going four hour episode. It was quite late in the film. We're already three <laughs> hours deep. I figured we'd go for a sequel. First, we'll make a case for how the events might have unfolded if the Nazi vehicles had started. And then we're going to explore the implications for the family members. Okay. Do you have any questions? No questions. Let's go. Okay, question number one. What happens once the chase begins? I've got a little, little setup. Georg is a master tactician. Okay. But he's in a civilian car heading for the hills with nine people crammed in. Mm -hmm. His crew is pretty much useless in this situation. The Nazis have two military grade vehicles, weapons if needed, and are carrying fewer and larger people. Is there any way that Georg is getting successfully out of this? I love how you like emphasize the larger people. At least they are. Well, because like fewer and larger. Because <laughs> the, the car is going to be lighter, so it's going to move easier. And. Like, his crew is made up of children. <laughs> like, he's in so much trouble. He could throw Marta at him or what's the name? Little, he's the got little one. Chuck the little one at him. Gilbert or whatever her fucking name is. Um, okay, so... It might have lightened the car a little bit. <laughs> what, was the, what was the question? Is there any way we can come up with where they the might Georg actually survive this survive. situation? So there would be... The Nazis are right on their tail. Mm. I gave it a small amount of thought and I was like, there is no way they're escaping this situation. Mm. They would head yeah. straight for the hills. Well, how, I mean, how, long you, do, how long are we talking? How long to... What Between them setting off and the Nazis. What was well, it we like? see it, don't what we? Was yeah, it, like? it was like a few seconds. Like, it was like, they, are, <laughs> they are not even... <laughs> like if the nuns hadn't have intervened, they'd have just been like alongside them like instantly. All right. Um, so he could. Uh, it depends how good of a racing driver he is. He could have. Found, he knows where all the narrow streets are, so he could have started we weaving for them and maybe kind of ditching the vehicles behind. Yeah, the only possibility I think is the old like um, turn down an alley, turn off the car. Oh, hope they've gone on, but you have to get enough separation. And how the hell do you pull that off? Because again, like. And even then, that's still like, they, they, it wouldn't take them long to think, okay, he's like, we would have caught up by now. So he's obviously yeah. hidden. Yeah. And so then they just stop and search. And they'd probably be quite good at searching. They were the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If they were good at anything. If, good if at we've anything, got to give them credit for anything. <laughs> Listen, I'm not one to give the Nazis credit, <laughs> but they were good at finding. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't think. And I, I guess Salz, is it Salzburg? Is that what it's called or something? I guess it's big enough that they could have a little race on the streets. But how many other Nazi cars are you going to pick up en route? Yeah, they were probably near Salzburg, weren't they? Because of the folk festival. So. Oh yeah, that's where they were, they were. No, they were leaving, leaving the Abbey thing, the the convent, or wherever whatever. that was. And that, that was in town. Yeah, it must have been. Must yeah, because because remember when the kids went and visited. Yeah. So. They're in Salzburg, so there's probably a ton of Nazis in there at this point. Yeah. So they probably so they can't head into town <laughs> and ditch them that way, and they yeah, can't head out of town because they just they're going to stay on the roads and just be out outdone by machines or and there's and there's nine of them, some very young children. Oh yeah, if you get on foot, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble town. They are one. Let, let's call it how it is. They're, they're getting captured. They're, get, they're getting it. Good, because last time I assumed that we would decide one thing and that's <laughs> not what we did. So question two, what would have happened to the family? Now I have prepared an answer, but mm -hmm. first I want to get some ideas from you about what you reckon would have happened to these guys after they'd been captured by the Nazis. Well, he was clearly 
a respect that they, they clearly needed him mm-hmm. for their military endeavors. Yeah. I well, they, they were like, we are going to use it. They seemed quite desperate, didn't they? Yeah. So he must have been very good. He must have been absolutely mustard as a sea captain. But um, would he have accepted? Or would he even force? The only way they'd have got him to is probably keeping his family for ransom. Yeah. Or like keeping them locked up. Yeah. So lock up the family. And then what do you reckon he does? Because he's very principled. I think he probably uh, just does the job. He does the nasty <laughs> yeah. thing. He didn't really like his <laughs> <No>. kids. <laughs> I'm <laughs> too principled. Until like act three, he didn't like his children in this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say they probably, to be fair, they were pretty reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have to cut so much from them. The Nazis. <laughs> so um, I think that, I think that they would have probably just said look we're keeping them under house arrest yeah we're, we're having- yeah what about maria what do you reckon they do with her do you reckon they just keep her under the house arrest as well uh what else are you thinking well i've got an answer <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah what? i love how you went oh, <laughs> i've got an answer <laughs> i've got a <laughs> belt like an answer. Go do, you re- do you remember the name i gave this sequel the sound of nazi interrogation, interrogation. so ah, you think she's what would have happened to the family, Freddie? The children. <laughs> the children would be hastily rehomed into less musical, more ideologically aligned families. <laughs> the Nazis, ever practical, would use the more talented singers as leverage to keep Georg in line. Mm-hmm. Most of the kids demonstrate early on that they have an aptitude for causing pain and misery, as exemplified with previous governesses. Mm-hmm. Based on this, we can safely assume that they would willingly join the Nazi party over the next <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> The captain, Georg, stubborn and initially indifferent to his children until discovering their international standard vocal talents, likely would have let some of his less in- <laughs> likely would have let some of his less important vocalists die before he chose to operate in the Nazi naval fleet. Eventually, he caves when the fate of one of his kids, whose names he can actually remember, becomes part of the ultimatum. Georg receives a telegram detailing the fate of Maria. Ooh. Maria finds herself under Nazi interrogation. However, being Maria, she belts out an ill-timed anthem of defiance. While such behavior might be commonplace in Salzburg, her indomitable spirit, coupled with a complete lack of tactical silence, compels the Nazi party to be the first to solve a problem like Maria. This was, <laughs> this was all too predictable, as Maria's energy was clearly going to get her killed one day anyway. Uh, with Georg's family dead or turned Nazi, he complies with the Nazi regime just long enough until he can sabotage their whole war effort and turns the tide of World War II, sinking two of their most important battleships. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So we've got a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, fuck we got rid of the annoying ones. Maria's out ending the, the war. <laughs> right. So that's my so, sequel. So, so um, on, on this, uh, <laughs> at the end, this, this massacre. Yes. Who's left standing? Uh, well, Maria's dead. Maria's dead. Uh, Lisa 100% is alive. Yeah. Someone someone picks her up. All the blonde lads are All definitely Nazis. <laughs> like 100%. When we first met them, even before the whole question of Nazis came in, I was looking at them like, these guys are I'm getting up. major Nazi vibes from these kids. They would have been picked up. Yeah, blonde, blue eyes. Yeah. They'd, have been, they'd have been whipped up into the, uh, yeah. the old program. And I reckon they'd have liked it. And they'd have killed it. They'd have loved it. They'd have fit right in. <laughs> they'd have probably kept them... Because of Hitler's eugenic plan, mm-hmm. they were like the archetypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what was it called? Ar- Aryans. The Aryans. So they'd have probably even kept them out of the line of the war. I mean, they were too young to be in the war, actually. Having thought the oldest that. was 14. I checked out for the escape scene to see if there was a chance that he could have helped. But So they were the boys, that uh, the second oldest girl, 100%. Yeah, she, <laughs> she could probably help. <laughs> she was probably already in the military. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's already she's already international fighting and this this is Liesl Friedrich and Gretchen my 50 year old <laughs> she just showed up on our door one day <laughs> and said I'm one of your kids <laughs> what did you think of the Nazis pretty great right <laughs> Yeah, I reckon I reckon they're definitely joining the party. One of those uh, kids. 
Uh, they yeah. didn't. They didn't once express any sentiment against the Nazis in the film. No, either. they didn't give a shocking fuck. actually <laughs> that they, they didn't. Give a fuck. Everyone, they performed for them. No one really did, to be honest. <laughs> apart from the captain, I don't think Maria really. <laughs> Most cared. of the other characters, like, oh, just just pretend we don't mind. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah Max pretend. Is like, it's all right. <laughs> just, it's not going to be you. You're blonde. That's what I actually had as one part of my original idea. Is what made it. Um, it was pretty unrealistic, his response to it, wasn't it? Georg's. Because even his own family and Max, they're all like, ah, well, the Anschluss is going to happen. Okay. It doesn't really matter, does it? But he was very hard line. Yeah. Out of, like the most principled good guy in the world. Okay. Really, he probably just didn't want to serve in a war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He didn't really mind the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually just don't like being on boats very much. I've, I've got terrible sea legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. If you liked great. my change or if you have any comments on it, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, Dave. <laughs>